Recording? No. Hang on, let's try again. Oh, yep. It started to record now, Councillor Locke. Say you're live. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Councillor Mary Locke, uh, Councillor for Sturchley Ward. Uh, welcome to my Councillor Ward Forum. Um, this meeting is being recorded um, for later uh, transfer onto the council's YouTube site. So if anybody doesn't want to be recorded, um, please put the hand up. Uh, right, that's okay. The hand signal is on the top of the screen. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you can put your hand up like that. And that shows me with my hand up. If you just see, it's just the top of the screen. It's it's a this um it's a little face with a hand up and is click that and uh, that will so you can ask a question. Um I've got a full a full agenda this evening. Um we've invited uh, Paul Blackford, PCSO from Bo for Bourneville Police Station. Um, and to give some feedback and take questions. So over to you, Paul. Good evening, everybody. Happy can all hear me. Yeah, yeah. Everybody picking me up, okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Oh, okay. <clears throat> right. Um, apologies uh, for anyone who's attended. Obviously, the uh, the, the meeting in Sturgis that we have the Sturgis Forum. Uh, so it'll be pretty much a repeat of what was uh, echoed on there, I guess. So I haven't had any figures in front of me because uh, I didn't expect to take a, a role in this one this evening. Uh, I was asked to uh, listen to the listen into the meeting uh, and perhaps chip in uh, if I needed to. But uh, as far as uh, everything goes, uh, it's been a, a strange year or more, hasn't it? So uh, burglaries across the ward are down generally. So. Uh, everything from uh, garden sheds to obviously to uh, residential so a burglary dwelling house uh, that we've seen a, a, a drop in number for burglars however then on a downside for that uh, vehicle crime uh, has increased a lot uh, so that's either theft from motor vehicle or theft of motor vehicle uh, there's been a, a, an increase across all areas um so, by, so a crime prevention advice uh, we would give for uh, your protecting your motor vehicles is uh, where you can uh, buy and fit a disc lock. Uh, this uh, is extremely difficult to remove uh, if you don't have the key. You would need an angle grinder to cut the uh, to cut to cut it off, and also keep your vehicle keys in a Faraday pouch or a Faraday box. Uh, this also helps with uh, theft, from motor, theft of motor vehicle uh, to help prevent crime. Uh, so that's two things we would recommend for that. Uh, for your house, again, standard, uh, anywhere that is normally verbal, the preferred method of entry these days appears to be uh, a lock snap. So that's usually a UPVC door. So we recommend that you get yourselves fitted with an anti-snap lock again. These are a really good piece of kit and they help prevent uh, burglaries. Okay, um, just a couple of items to mention on the ward in relation to vehicle crime. We have had a male arrested uh, with, in relation to vehicle crime. So we have seen a, a little bit of a decrease in that. Um, we've had two cannabis uh, factories that have been found uh, on the ward area. Uh, one was on Macefield and the other one was in uh, Cottridge. Okay, does anybody have any questions for me at all? Could I ask a question? I know on social media sites, people are very concerned about crime. Um, what would you suggest that people do? Um, you know, I mean, I know it's easy because people say phone 101, but sometimes the criticism of 101 is yeah. there never seems to be anybody at the end of the phone, you know, to take the details and that or, you know, not everyone has got computers and things like that because it is worrying and i know people feedback to me how concerned there are about the crime okay uh, unfortunately the best number uh, if, if if there's any elements of threat harm risk or you feel you're in danger at all then first point of call is obviously 999 
but if it's to report something that, that isn't that, uh, the best way to report it is 101. I know it could sometimes be a bit of a pain and be a bit of a long-winded task. However, I know that people contact people like Mary all the time uh, to report things. However, we need these things to be officially recorded, officially logged. And the only way to get that is to go through 101 or you could try, if you do have a computer, you have access to a computer, web chat uh, is a, the, another good way of reporting it. But we need these incidents to be called in correctly or we need to be informed properly. I know Mary contacts me like every other day, don't you, Mary, or you or it's a peer. So that, that's fine. And I've got no problem with that. But but, so like, but it does need to be recorded officially. And so 101 and web chat is the best way to do that. Okay, it's all right. I think you're on. Hi, all right. Thank you, Mary. Paul, Paul, thank you very much. I just wanted to say how useful the um the updates are through the neighbourhood alert. I so when know. there was a lot of trouble with Japanese cars and catalytic converters, it's so helpful to know because then people are extra aware and extra vigilant. Um, so I just want to say thank you for those. They really are really helpful. No, that's fine. Any 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 time we can be a help us all that. So that, that, that's lovely. I'm glad you found the information useful. Forget this one mute myself because it's better to, for us to have the most of us to be on mute um, because uh, it plays up with the bandwidth as they call it. Has anyone else got any questions? No. 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 I'm afraid. Well, that's it. So please remember what Paul said about um, web chat and 101s. And um, thank you, Paul, for coming this evening. No, that's not a problem at all. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll still be here. I'm, I'm going to be here for a little while yet. Uh, but obviously, I am going to have to go back out on patrol at some point. But uh, I'll, I'll stay around for as long as I can. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, now we've got Daniel Lloyd from... Um, uh, future parks accelerators um uh, to tell us all about crowdfunding so there you go uh daniel let's see from you now thank you very much um i've got a bit of a presentation to share if that's okay um so i'll just pop my screen in um i can't see you all on doing this but can anyone confirm if you can see the slides yeah okay yeah that's fine thanks fantastic um not sure on my toolbars there, sorry. Um, so as mentioned, I'm from uh, Naturally Birmingham Future Parks Accelerator. Um, I'm Dan and I'm here to talk about um, the potential for crowdfunding for some of our green spaces. Just a bit of an update on what we've been up to in this regard um, and some of the ways people can get involved. Um, so I'll start with a bit about who we are. So as I mentioned, our project is called Naturally Birmingham and we're part of a national programme uh, called the Future Parks Accelerator. Uh, this is an initiative funded by the uh, National Heritage Lottery Fund and the National Trust uh, and we're one of eight cities nationally to be involved in this. Um, our project in particular is about embedding the value of green spaces and nature biodiversity across all of the council. Um, so this is at all levels of decision making we're considering the impact on green spaces and nature um, and as well as the more wider ranging issues such as climate change and biodiversity loss, things like that. Um, so, you know, that's quite a quite a broad uh, objective, you know, to make sure that the whole council is thinking about green spaces. So one of the things we've tried to do as part of our project is to tie for, uh, four smaller pilots based around the, the city's uh, council plan. Um, so those initiatives are on the right there, of course, jobs, jobs and skills, uh, housing, children and health and well-being. Um, so as I mentioned, we want to embed the value of green spaces across all of these sectors, you know, just to show that, you know, parks and green spaces aren't just grass. You know, there's plenty to them with all of these issues and you know they affect us all in some way um, and also making sure that we can maximize the legacy benefits of the um, the 2022 commonwealth games so a uh, little thing down there is just the other cohorts that are also running similar initiatives uh, and you can see they range all the way from bournemouth up to edinburgh so it, it, it's a big national scheme and there's, there's plenty of momentum behind the work we're doing um, so a bit of a background to what we're doing there's, there's two maps on the screen here you should be able to see 
um, and these show the left one shows the index of multiple deprivation for Birmingham. So those um, those grey, dark blue kind of areas are areas that are more deprived, and the paler beige colours are, are least deprived. And the index of multiple deprivation uh, is a lot of weighted factors, um, generally based around income, employment, health, and the natural environment. And on the right there, you can see map two, which is our um, Birmingham's green spaces um, superimposed onto that map. And you should be able to generally see that it does tend to be a case of um, the, the more deprived areas, you know, particularly across that central region, tend to have less good access to good quality green spaces. Uh, and by good quality, we mean that you know, it's good maintenance, plenty of habitat, you know, lots of community involvement. And we do tend to find that those, you know, more impoverished communities are missing out on the, you know, the huge benefits of green spaces, whether that's mental health, um, physical activity, all that community sense that parks can bring. So a big part of what we're doing is making sure that, you know, as many of our nearly 600 parks, and that's not including all the little grass verges and everything, that's, you know, parks you know, that are better used and that the people that don't access them or can't access them, um, you know, we're reducing those barriers and trying to make it that anyone can access a green space in some way. Um, so as I mentioned before, our sort of you know, our overall aims are quite strategic, they're quite high level. So what we've tried to do is split some of our work across those four pilots I mentioned earlier, and even more focused on the ground, the things that we're doing in parks, you know, right at the core of it, things that people can see. Um, so as part of our children's pilot, a lot of that work is based around um, improving, you know, what that park means to local residents, you know, involving schools, involving residents, families to get more involved in parks, to break down some of the stigma that can be associated with them. Um, we bring in things such as nature trails or, you know, um, little walks around various parks or linking parks together um, going through some of the, the species you can find in parks, the things you can do, that it's not just, you know, trees and some grass, you know, you can look under a leaf, there's plenty of beetles, um, and I'll talk a bit more about that later on. We've also got our park styles initiatives, which are a bit more robust. So these are a, a series of activities you can do with families and young children um, to get more involved in nature. And there's all sorts of things on that um, link there. I'll make sure the slides can be um, distributed so that we can, you know, all these links are intact. Um, and then that thing there that we're going to be talking about today is crowdfunding. So alternate ways we can sustain parks and improve them. Um, I'll try and be a bit quicker with this. So employment, um, as you might expect, highlighting all the various green jobs we have and breaking down that stereotype of it's not just gardeners. You know, there's landscape architects, event planners, ecologists, there's all sorts of green space jobs. And we want to highlight those to people who maybe don't know how you get into them or what kind of roles are available. Health and well-being is what I've touched on before, um, whether that's using the parks for health and well-being activities, mental health benefits, uh, space, physical activities, you know, there's all sorts of things going on. And just empowering the community to where they can to set up these kind of activities and groups themselves. You know, it, it's not just about what we can do for you, but what you know you can do for yourselves and how, how we can help you do that. Um, and the housing pilot is just more that smaller scale that it doesn't have to be a park to be a green space. You know, there's plenty of stuff that we can do on grass verges, gardens, and these things called communal gardens, which uh, where residents get together in a, a communal gardening space and grow vegetables, things like that. So you know, we've got a big, wide ranging project. And the core of that is this, this concept we call environmental justice. There's a nice little diagram here that kind of explains what we mean by that. We all know what inequality is, you know, that top left diagram where someone has better access and, you know, more access to opportunities than, say, that, you know, the child on the right. And then as we progress more through to justice, we improve the opportunities and the equality between, you know, various groups. Um, you know, and we get to that bottom right image there where it's not just equality and opportunity or access, you know, because that's not always true equality. If two people have the same tools and assistance, as you can see on that top right um, diagram, you know, it doesn't mean that there's equal opportunity. And we really want to get to that justice point where you've got a big, broad range of tools, opportunities and systems in place that mean everyone has you know, that access. Um, so in, in Sturchley itself, um, as I'm sure many of you are you've got a good range of green spaces, there's Ashbrook Grove and Pitley so close, um, Hazelwell allotments, and then, you know, all of that lovely green space around the rim. Never say the word, Rio Valley used to live there, you wouldn't think. Um, you know, all of that stuff along with the River Reef, as well as Sturchley Recreation Ground. 
So part of the project, you know, we'd love to hear from you if you're involved in any kind of friend of park groups, community groups, any kind of groups who want to get more involved in green spaces or as a resident yourself. Uh, or if you'd like more help setting up these kind of groups, you know, we'd love to hear from you. There'll be some emails at the end of the presentation that you can jot down or send out in the slides. And the other one for that is the Birmingham Open Spaces Forum, who we do a lot of close work with, who can be reached at that uh, address there. And that's more for the Friends of Parks groups and the more formal um, setting up of groups associated with parks or finding one that's already exists in existence. Um, so to the main sort of chunk of what I wanted to talk about, um, just updating on our um, fundraising uh, case study that we've set up in uh, at Aubrey Fields, which is not too far away from Sturchley, just down the road. And if anyone's been there, you'll know it is quite an unassuming park. Um, it's, it's something we've been, it's a path we've been focusing quite a lot on as part of our future parks accelerator work. Um, and if you turned up, you'd think it's quite unassuming. It's quite a standard park. It's, you know, it's as you can see from the picture, a bit of green space, some playing fields, um, skating bowls, and a bit of a circular walk around it with a, a child's play area. And it's, 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 it's as much of a standard park as you could ever think of. And as I mentioned, we've been we've been doing some work as part of the Future Parks Accelerator on that anyway. Those nature trails and the park stars work, a lot of that's been going on there. We're helping to set up a Friends of Park group, so there's that more community involvement there. And we've popped some uh, little things like notice boards in there. The one thing that might be quite surprising that we found there when we were doing some ecological studies is that you know, there's, there's actually um, slow worms and common lizards present in Dorbury Fields. And you know, for what is essentially a small park in the middle of a residential estate, it's not the kind of thing you'd expect to find there. And you know, everyone was quite surprised that we've got these you know, relatively rare species, common lizards and slow worms in this completely unassuming park. And this is where we were looking to explore these alternate ways that we can fund improvements to these um, green spaces. So, you know, there's, there's tightening budget pressures, um, there's a reduction in funding for parks and green spaces, and it's very much turned into a bit of a maintain what we have and try and protect it. And part of what we're doing in the Future Parks Accelerator is looking at ways that we can enhance green spaces and protect even more so and expand what we already have and make Birmingham the city of nature, which is a core part of what we're looking at. So what we did here is, you know, we, we identified the site. It's something that can, you know, a lot of work is happening already in Dorbury. And once we found this out, we decided to work in partnership with the uh, Birmingham and Black Country Wildlife Trust uh, to undertake a habitat creation project and um, funded by community funds. Um, so this involved the installation of reptile banks and a rocky habitat, um, enhancement of grassland for pollinators, bees, insects, all that kind of thing and the installation of an interpretation board. So something just to explain all the stuff that's going on, all these little lizards uh, and slow ones that are present that you just wouldn't think were there. And the problem with those is they're quite um, they're quite shy. You don't tend to see them um, and they tend to be tucked away in some of the undergrowth a bit more. So we wanted some boards just to explain what's there and what kind of uh, what kind of species are there and how they live. So we had a quite a modest target, quite a small fundraiser. Um, and this was the first time we'd done anything like this whatsoever, you know, having these community funds for green spaces. And we set ourselves a target of £2,000. And the idea was that we would make up any shortfall that wasn't raised, depending on how well this uh, project went. Um, yeah. However, when we got to the end of it, the, the fundraiser uh, ran for about two, three months and we absolutely exceeded the donation target. You know, we got £2,360 raised. Um, we had 76 donations, uh, which totaled to £1,360, and we had a su supplementary donation from uh, a local company, I Am Properties, that topped us up an extra thousand and took us well over that um, fundraising target. Um, one of the great things we had was we had several expressions of interest in our project and desire to learn more about what we do and get more involved. We had a couple of volunteering inquiries, people wanting to get involved in the actual physical work in Dorbury Fields, helping set up those habitats getting a bit more involved beyond that financial donation. And we had a further expression of interest from a local building company, John Sisk and Sons, to donate materials, so rocks, paving stones that the lizards can bathe on and um, you know, sunbathe as lizards do. And one of the things that we found, you know, absolutely extraordinary about the project, it was quite a, a small, mild thing, something we tested to see how that might work. And we just got an absolutely incredible response from people who um, donated to the project. So the left hand side of there is some of the um, some of the comments we bought from people who donated and on the right there that's all summarized in a nice little um, in a little word cloud um, and if you can you can see hopefully if it's big enough um, that we had you know such incredible feedback people really excited about the project something that they hadn't seen before you know and for somebody that's so assuming so, so unassuming as Dorbury Fields 
um, you know, people were really excited that these kind of species, these kind of projects were going on so local to them where you just wouldn't think they'd happen. Um, and so that you know, brings us to, um, that's, that was a summary of how um, crowdfunding works. So that's something we're really keen to expand on. And it, it, it's another way of working that has some really big potential to both get people involved in green space and more aware of what's going on, but also a way of enhancing and protecting our green spaces. So as we put there, we're keen to hear from you. Um, I'll pop some uh, emails and websites on the next uh, chat. But for now, um, if anyone wants to, to pop up in the chat or in the um, speak out, or if you want to send us any feedback later, you know, do you have any feedback on what we're doing? Um, we're keen to understand if, if people think this is the right approach. I mean, obviously we've had some success with Dalby Fields, but do people think this could be done in more parks? Um, and there any ideas on the kind of spaces near to you that we could that could also benefit from this approach? Is there anything you'd like to see in your green spaces and your opinions on the future of uh, nature, biodiversity and green spaces and parks? Or if you want to learn more or get involved, you know, we're really keen to hear from everyone. Um, so it's just a bit of a flavour on our team. You know, there's, there's, there's a wide range of us. We come from a wide range of backgrounds, you know, from children's to housing to public health. Um, and if you would like to um, get more involved or find out more information. There's an email there, Debbie Needle, our comms and engagement lead at futureparks at bossof.org.uk. Um, we also have a project website that's linked there at the near the bottom, um, naturallybirmingham.org, um, or we have social media at naturallybirmy1 on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, or again, the website just at the bottom there. Um, I've got one more slide to go through, but are there any questions on the community fundraising? Any feedback? Um, we, as I say, we're keen to know if this is the kind of approach that you know, people are keen to see more of. Um, if there are any questions about the project, I'm happy to answer those as well. I think it's very, very interesting. Um, and um, we've got a number of uh, groups in Sturchley. We've got Sturchley Bloomers, uh, Fruit and Nut Village. You, I know of them, uh, Friends of Ten Acres, Sustainable Sturchley. We've got Friends of Sturchley Park, Friends of Hazelwell Park. Um, and it would be good. I did invite them to this evening, but uh, unfortunately they haven't come. But I will obviously send it out. But it's really, really interesting. And there may be people here this tonight who may be interested in having a word with you. Absolutely. I mean, one of the fantastic things about Sturchley is those range of groups, as you've just mentioned, there's so much interest and this is expanding across Birmingham. You know, we're, we're blown away almost sometimes by the amount of interest in, in these things. Yeah. Um, so as I've mentioned, if, if you, you know, there's, I've just gone through a lot I'm aware I've spoken quite quickly. So if, if you do want to look a bit more, there's plenty of information on our website. Um, and then one final thing that I could plug, if, if I may, is that we're running an Earth Stories initiative. So this is just a way of people, residents of Birmingham, letting us know their opinions on, on green spaces, what they want the future to look like, and some of the key memories they've got. So we really just want to get as many opinions, stories, insights from anyone. And you can do so on our website or through the Survey Monkey link there. I've got John okay. who's got a question. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, have you got a education engagement officer at all? Uh, that tent so if i just see the slides there so for education that will be split between our children's lead and our skills lead so sam and sophie there and um, i can do you want the emails for those if you want to get more involved? please yeah yeah so um so sam dr paul at birmingham.gov.uk could you repeat that again sorry sam dot hall so this name on the screen there and then at birmingham.gov.uk i want to say yep uh, the usual. OK, yeah. Okay. And then uh, Sophie is Sophie.green. So it, even though it's his land there, she got married recently. So Sophie.green and then at Birmingham.gov.uk. OK, that's great. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions of anything from anyone? I'll pop my email in the chat as well, just in case. Anything. Yeah, I've just put those two email addresses in the chat as well for you. Um, I know Catherine I, outside Ascension Church there is, there is um a green space there. Um isn't the Catherine? 
Sorry, yes, I, I put something in the chat um, because it's not a park. It's always really difficult to know who to communicate with to be able to use it. And I just wondered if you could help us with that. Absolutely. Yeah. As, a, as a, a sort of try to um, push with these kind of presentations, mm -hmm. green spaces aren't just parks. It's absolutely every little bit of grass that anyone can you know, come at grass, parks, um, trees, anything, anything at all. So, you know, we're really keen to get involved in those micro spaces as well. Um, so I've popped my email in the chat if you want to get in touch. That's absolutely, absolutely fine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Is there anyone else got any questions? <laughs> no. Right. Well, thank you, Daniel. Very interesting. Thank um, you very much. I think now we go on to uh, Steve Squires from Dad's Lane Community Association. Um, and the floor is yours, Steve. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Um, I had a last minute thing where I thought I might not be able to be here, so I actually recorded a presentation, so I hope that's okay. I'll just play that and then uh, feel free to ask me any questions you want. Hold on. Okay, Steve. Hi, my name is Steve Squires and I'm the Chair of Trustees for Dad's Lane Community Association. Back in 2019, the previous trustees, Doug and Julie Andrews, decided that it was time to pass the centre on to new leadership. Uh, and with the help of people like Karen and Mary, a few meetings were held and a group of us agreed to look at what was needed to modernise the centre, both from a structural point of view and from a legal perspective. We worked closely with Doug and Julie, and then four of us took on the charity and formed a new charitable incorporated organisation under the same name. There are a whole load of legal things to tie up, and we're still working through some of those, but now the building and garden alongside the, the, the association are all linked together under a new charity number. As a charity, our, our key charitable objectives, the things which drive why we do what we do, haven't really changed the heart of the original objectives of the association that was set up over 50 years ago. Firstly, it's about promoting well-being. To promote the well-being of residents without distinction in the Sturchley, Hazelwell, Kings Heath area of Birmingham. Secondly, to build community, to work with others to improve all aspects of life, social, mental, physical, spiritual and educational and to foster community spirit for the achievement of these and other charitable objectives. Uh, thirdly, it's about creating space to operate a community facility in furtherance of the charitable objectives. In fancy words that uh, we simply put into two words, building community. When we were able to gather, we had a brilliant meeting where neighbours and others from the community came up with 68 ideas of how the centre could be used. And we went away and started to look at how we could put some of these ideas into action. One of the things we wanted to do straight away was to try and get people into the building again. So we started running drop-in Wednesdays, <clears throat> where people could drop in on a Wednesday, including the name. Uh, we kept it simple. And we saw up to 20 people coming each week grabbing a hot drink and a biscuit, doing crafts, jigsaws, and just chatting about life together. It was the highlight of my week. Then COVID-19 hit. The last year has been such a challenging time for everyone. Many people have lost friends and family and all have missed out on relationships and activities that sustain us. But amongst it all, I've seen little glimpses of hope and positivity a collective spirit and neighbourliness that's brought joy and held us together in difficult times. As we begin to emerge into a new way of life, it will be important to hold on to the good things we've learnt. And we hope the Dad's Lane Community Association will be a brilliant resource in bringing people together and building community. Last year, as it became clear that the pandemic would make it impossible to meet in the centre, the trustees decided it would be a great opportunity to begin a well-needed renovation project. We had no idea what was in store. Peeling back the wallpaper revealed more and more issues in the building which would need to be addressed before it would be safe to open again. Multiple leaks and general deterioration meant that the job got bigger and bigger. But with the help of hundreds of hours given by volunteers, like people from Good Gym, local people and people from further afield, we were soon back to brick on all three floors, having filled more than 10 skips with crumbling plaster, leaking roofs and rotten joists. 
there have been some pretty dark days as the job has got bigger and bigger. But if we want this space to be useful for the next 50 years, we have to invest time and energy and money to do the job properly. We are presented with this unique opportunity to reimagine this centre and to make it an accessible and inspiring place to be. We've worked with a local architect and fundraiser and we've taken advice from skilled people and practitioners to come up with plans which start to create a space that will fulfil some of the ideas generated by local people. So the reconfigured ground floor will incorporate a brilliant cafe space that has the option of opening out into the main larger space. We're relocating the previously inadequate accessible toilet and adding baby changing facilities. We're making the garden accessible and creating space for outside social connection to the rear and sides of the property. It's been a hard year, but thanks to over 100 volunteers and a few skilled labourers, we're now in the construction phase, working towards opening the ground floor at some point in autumn. Plans are going to the Council Planning Committee in the next few days. Uh, we've developed a website and started engaging with people on Facebook, where we've got nearly 300 followers. But there is a, still a long way to go. We've benefited hugely from local support, uh, particularly from carpenter Daniel Panachatra, who's given about two days a week since September. But we're now in real need of the finance to continue the project. We want it to be a future-proofed space by the community for the community, a building and garden that gives people a sense of belonging, peace and fun. We need to raise over £40,000 for the first phase of the building project and a further £25,000 a year to support the running costs of the centre. Um, in terms of where we are right now today, uh, the first fix electric started yesterday, which we're really excited about. Uh, we've got a brand new free petrol mower given to us by the manufacturer and we're about to launch a garden project funded by the National Lottery, partnering with Ford House Forest School, Fruit and Nut Village and Sustainable Life. We're particularly focusing on people who are anxious about post-pandemic life and we'd love to hear from anyone who would want to get involved in that. So that's where we are today. Dad's Lane Community Association, building community. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Maybe Daniel may be able to help you as well. There may be some advice and that there. Um, so have a look at the um, the PowerPoint and everything they send. Um, I mean, I, I I remember visiting there and having a meeting. Um, it's nearly two years ago now. I mean, you know, the time's gone on and um, it's really moved on and it's really it is exciting what you're doing and i think with the new station when it does come it will be an ideal spot if people miss the train you'll be able if you get a cafe or something running it'll be great are there any questions anybody want to know any more about dad's lane do people remember dad's lane um uh, before you know when it was because it was, I believe it was a doctor's surgery, wasn't it? And then it was left to the community. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. About 60 years ago, a um, doctor sadly lost his wife and decided to stop being a doctor. And he gave his surgery into this association specifically for people in the area. So it's got yeah. an amazing history to it. Yeah. And I remember sorting through all the, the paper. There was file, files and papers going back. It must have been 25, 30 years. I mean, it, it was amazing. I mean, I don't know whether it's all still up there, but uh, it was it was fantastic. And, uh, you, know, no, it, I, you know, I wish you well and, you know, let's um, hope things go well. Uh, there's no questions at all? No. Right, shall we move on now to Brendan? Yeah, I'm just going to open up my... Uh, uh, Everybody's doing uh, a presentation tonight, I have. <laughs> it's just got me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, can, can everyone see that? It's the new social phobia from the, in these Zoom times is the uh, I fear of not being heard on Zoom or Teams. But can everyone see that and hear that OK? Yeah, we can see it and hear it. Thanks. Brilliant. Um, I just, I'm going to go through really quickly because I could literally talk for an hour on this. And uh, so I'm going to go through very quickly. So if there's any questions, you know, please feel free to ask. But uh, um, all this is going to be very top line. Got it, but the presentation three parts, a little bit of history of um, um, the Dementia Friendly Community in Sturchley, <clears throat> a little bit of history about LEAF itself, and then uh, talk about what we've been doing for the last few months since lockdown, and then our future plans, which is this Dementia Friendly Sturchley. Um, we started off because I don't know how much people know about um, in terms of the dementia care in the area, and how um, basically Sturchley was given the Dementia Friendly Community Award by the Alzheimer's Society, in 2019. A lot of it was done by the work by Karen C and her colleagues, Danny and Tit Karen. Um, a lot of that was organised by them in terms of the world, the, the Alzheimer's days and the um, the work by uh, people, I think it was Sturchy Bloomers and the uh, uh, Wally Mammoth did all these wonderful yarn bumming exercises around Sturchley. And also there, that lovely little mural to celebrate um, being given the DFC, in uh, which I call Pete's Park, which is Sturchy Park at the back of um, Morrison's now. So there's been a great reputation in the area for um, looking after people with um, dementia. Part of it is Leaf, the Leaf Creative Arts, who are the guys I work with. Um, they've been doing these uh, memory caps since about 2015. Um, they do a mixture of memory caps, um, um, some other activities, but also to, for people with dementia, but also for people who are lonely and vulnerable. And so each of the sessions we do involve things such as listening, singing, um, playing musical instruments, dancing, um, and also a lot of art and a lot of reminiscence work and a lot of um, local history and things like that. What are things we'll be trying to do is introduce innovation into um, into um, uh, looking after people with dementia, which is where things like inter intergenerational groups come in. So we actually had a relationship with a mums and babies group that come in and uh, you know like the kids would be there with them and so that our people could our guys with dementia and their carers could interact with them but it's also little things like they could sing um uh, nursery rhymes because the one thing about dementia is that things like music is one of the last things to go and so that even when like a lot of people struggle to remember tomorrow they've got great vivid memories of teaching their own kids nursery rhymes and things like that and so they could all e easily join in and the same thing with the silent disco some of that you'd normally associate with Glastonbury and um, you know musical festivals and stuff like that, but we introduced that as well, which is really a wonderful success thing. Success thing. Um, this is the the meat and bones of what we've been doing, or we did before lockdown. The top right there is the calf. Um, as you can see, there's the Sturchy baths. We've regularly got over 35 people, 30, 35 people in the room for our sessions. They're really wonderful, life is affirming things. As I said, every session was slightly different. So we built, you know, we had dancing and things like that, and we had art, obviously, and all this reminiscence work. The last 10 minutes was always, um, there's always a, a musical bit. And we would do a lot of feedback. We get a lot of feedback from our groups, uh, asking what they like, what they don't like, that kind of thing. And everyone said that the, one of the favorite things was the music at the end of the singing. So we thought we'd go out on a limb and just try to see if we could do it. And we decided to have a, 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 a choir. Again, this would have been Birmingham's first ever dementia friendly choir. Uh, again, we set up at the Baths in the main room there. On the Monday morning, we had no idea if anyone was going to turn up. And at you know, 25 past, there was no one there. And just before half past, there was five or six people. And then within about 10 minutes after that, there was about 15, 16. And we were chuffed. We thought that was great. We thought, you know, even if that was the limit of what, um, uh, what would happen, or, you know, the group would grow, we thought that was great. And it was just wonderful. But up to the end, but before we'd finished the lockdown, we're up to 35 people again. You know, like that was a, you can see that's one of the good sessions we had. A life affirming thing. One of the things I love about it is that the confidence it gives people and the memories and support give the people with dementia so much of that. You've got people like uh, standing up in the, uh, in the end of the second session and doing their own solos, just doing a verse for a bit. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And anyone, when we actually do start the groups up again, please do come along and experience because they are really life affirming uh, events. Um, Art for Wellbeing is one for people who are socially isolated and Good Vibrations is part of Memory Calf, but it's uh, more based on music over in Billsley. Uh, but we'll go into a bit more of that in a bit. But this is some of the events that we ran um, again at the Baths. Um, we did the, the memory, we had a, two choirs did um, what, um, two choir performance performances 
Um, the first one to over 100, about 100 people. Absolutely amazing event, performing three songs. I can see the good turnout from the choir. The second one just before Valent on Valentine's Day, just before lockdown started. But we've also introduced things such as the social events because we realised that we were talking to our, um, our guests and their carers, but their family don't know what their parents get up to or their aunts and uncles or grandparents. So we wanted to involve the families. So we introduced a couple of um, social events just to get them involved. And Carolyn know about this really well, is that we had an exhibition in the baths of all the work that had been done across the last year. And it was up for about a month. And on the, the, the first the Saturday of the main exhibition, there was literally a few hundred people pop in throughout the day looking at it. Um, it's just an absolutely great thing. Another Birmingham first is the bottom right. Um, cinema screenings of um, Calamity Jane and White Christmas. Um, what we did with these is that they made a dementia friendly, which meant that the lights were still up or slightly down, had subtitles, a good space for, you know, for wheelchairs, etc. If people wanted to talk, they could talk. They could sit down with a cup of tea and a biscuit. The subtitles were on. They could sing along to the heart's content with all the songs. And what we did before is that we linked the films to the other sessions so that the, um, the cafe would have art projects, people like painting um, um, uh, cactuses or what have you, or making bunting. And in the choir, they'd learn the songs from Yippie Kai, what's it like, Yippie Kai, yeah, yeah. Whip Crack Away or Secret Love or White Christmas, things like that. So it's absolutely the two wonderful, wonderful experiences. But, and that's what I put his put on there. This is some of the events and activities that helped Sturge you win the DFC back in October 2019. And that brings us to where we are now, because we wanted to move on that. We wanted to, at the start of last year, we wanted to move on it, but then lockdown happened. When lockdown happened, literally every person that we speak to was a vulnerable, isolated person. Literally every person. We knew that we couldn't just leave them to be vulnerable and isolated, that we knew we had to keep working, we had to keep contacting them, and we had to work somehow and work differently. The first thing we did, and which I said this morning on a, on a, um, a, a meeting with the uh, forward carers, probably the, only, the one thing I was going to get out of this for every group would be it's a WhatsApp group, because that has been an absolute lifesaver for us. It's been the most amazing success in terms of, it's been a non-stop um, selection of positivity, support. There's about 30 people on it, something like that. And if anyone's feeding down, um, they can just say, you know, and they'll get full of like, like those people saying, how are you, things like that. If they go out for the day, um, if they, you know, go out for a walk, something like that, they'll post pictures. If they make a nice meal or something like that, all these post pictures. But one of the other things I was gonna say is that we also took a lot of this information and we're gonna use it to replan I'll go into that in a second. In fact, I'll go into it now. The, um, this is one of the other successful things that we did was these newsletters. And these have been so fantastic successful, really in terms of a lot of positivity in them. Um, we've uh, People said to us in, the, in our feedback, said it's one of their favourite times of the week getting this because it's just full of lovely little stories. But one of the things we found from the newsletter and from the WhatsApp group is how people have slightly changed in the last year how priorities have changed. And I know Daniel was talking about green spaces earlier, but we found that as well, is that so much now was people appreciating the little things like the ducks in the park, the um, the flowers in the in the tree, the flowers or the trees or what have you, and also the role that pets are played. So much so that when we do come back into um, sessions, we will be adapting, there will, will be more wildlife activities and more uh, open air activities, things like that. And also recipes. I mean, recipes were fantastically successful. People sharing recipes and then a week later or two days later, someone else sharing, oh, I tried that. It was wonderful. Wonderful little thing. Um, we kept our guys supported by sending out arts and activity packs. This was, a, um, to, I think, to celebrate the Indian uh, Festival of Life in, um, in autumn time. And that's a dyer. We sent these out and um, they had their arts and paints and got them to paint it. Well, this one here was uh, for Christmas. We sent that out at the start of December, got people to decorate these little wooden things for a part of a, um, an activity that we did, which was coming up in a second. Um, I'll, I'll come back to this a bit, a bit more about um, this in a minute about our videos, but um, this in particular is just wonderful. I love this story about this. It's one of the, the guys, Rachel and Shelley, um, put a video on how to make a hedgehog hotel or hedgehog house. And at the moment, I looked it up on YouTube yesterday. There's been over a thousand views of it. 
So it's absolutely wonderful little thing. But basically every month there's been a different um, arts tutorial. Sometimes to go with the like the dia there to go with the arts and activities. Sometimes it's things such as this movement with Natalie, which was like how to keep um, do movement in the house, you know, to, to exercise, but while seated, things like that. Sorry, it's a bit of a rush thing, but I could literally stand for hours talking about this. This was one of my favourite events of the whole year. Um, we introduced, this was just before the second lockdown started, so it's a real shame they put a kibosh on it. Um, we started doing these um, surprise visits to people, who uh, the carers. Um, and this one here, top left, this was to Martin, who looked after his dad, Brian, um, who uh, unfortunately passed away a couple of weeks ago, bless him. Um, but this was, he, Martin absolutely loves um, Pink Floyd. And so this lad here basically came and we all sang Comfortably Numb to him. No, I wish you were here. I wish you were here to him. The, a couple of weeks later, this is to Eileen, and we actually all sang Doris Day songs to him because Eileen absolutely loves Doris Day. Absolutely wonderful, life-affirming um, things. But this is talk about nature. We found that nature is so important to our guys. Again, and that's going to like change the way we were working. We'll be looking to do more things with nature coming up. This was a stroll that we did in Mosley Park in um, in the in, in the late autumn. No, sorry, late summer, early autumn. And um, again, we had about just we had we were so careful about um, the COVID rules and the regulations about numbers of people and things like that. And we did it in Mosley Park because you control numbers there. It's a private park and we had um, we could actually access it because we had access to the keys for the day. Um, great experience. Um, this is what we did at Christmas. These decorations were sent out. We, we, paint, we decorated two trees in Mosley Park. And it's a lovely little thing as well. Again, it's part of this network. So we're building up a network of connections not just for people in parks, things like that, but um, artists, everything from videographers to animators, et cetera, et cetera. So many. Um, oh, this was a lovely little one we did, which was um, one of our um, uh, girls, uh, her um, age 70, I think it was 70th birthday, um, Gerdiel. Her daughter had to work that day. And so she asked us if anything we could do. So we had a birthday party for her. There was about 16 of us on the call. And uh, Janam Din Mubarak Ho, is happy birthday to you. I think that's in Punjabi. And so we basically all sang it to her in her, in her old her native language. Um, and it was just actually a lovely little thing to do. It really was great. Um, and this is the next step. This is where, why I'm talking today, really. Is so we basically wanted to come up with this activity to, to build on the um, activity, to build on the, the, the award of the DFC from the Alzheimer's Society. And we basically just wanted to um, build on that. And, we wanted to create this charter, and it's something that one that, that the whole of the church will try and buy into, um, which is one of the reasons why we take out to community groups like the Neighbour Forum and Sturch the Way Forward, as well as the traders and just individual members of the public. Um, it's just something that that will reflect well on the whole area of Sturch. Like. It's something that um, it will generate good publicity, which I think it will, and goodwill. The one thing about this is that going door to door to people, I was talking about this on this call this morning, is you'd be amazed how every person has got a story about dementia because someone always says, yeah, my dad had it or my, 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 my wife's husband, my wife's father or my, my granddad had it. There are so many people who dementia was affected. We talk about some figures. Um, we have talked about some figures of how many is in Burns, but 21,000 and there's X amount, 850,000 in people with dementia in the, the UK. I think that's actually really underestimating. And it's something that will grow as well, which is one of the reasons why I think we need to get on top of this. Um, but the whole point of DFC, the DFC, Dementia Friendly Sturch, is, is something that people can buy into, that they feel proud to support. And I think it's something that people will come out and support. Um, this was mainly for the traders and the businesses when we go out to see them. This line here, I've said on so many presentations, it's probably the most depressing thing I've written in my life, which was, I, start, I wrote it and then I deleted it and thought, no, I've got to say it. Um, why we need it is because every custom, every trade, every organisation in the area will have customers who have, who have dementia, who already have dementia. And undoubtedly, they will have customers who will get dementia. So it's not something that's a really niche thing. It's something that will be... Uh, affecting, if not everyone. Um, Alzheimer's Society today said they reckon one in 14 people will get it, which is um, yeah, it's quite a frightening statistic. 
Um, and so what we're trying to do though with the campaign is raise awareness about dementia, but it's also making awareness about the carers and how to make life easy for them and to make life easy for people with dementia. So it's not a scary campaign. We're not frightening um, um, the trades. We're just saying to them that we'll have a chat with you how you actually do some extra practices because you, you undoubtedly already have good dementia friendly practices if you've got good customer facing skills. You know, and we're just basically saying to these people as well that there is a there's an emotional decision to actually um, to help out because it's a good thing to do. But there's also a rational um, decision for companies to help because it can be part of their CSR, their corporate social responsibility. It's compliant with the Equality Act. If they've got any um, community benefits programs, charters, what have you, it helps with that. So we're basically giving it on a, a, as many people as possible to hear this. And um, this is what we want. We're trying to sign up ambassadors. Uh, people like you guys who can actually spread the word of what we're actually doing and what the campaign is. We're giving out these uh, welcome packs. I've got some illustrations in a second of what they are. Um, we're asking to be to display the the, um, the posters, display the stickers, and to talk to people who come in. And just to, if, when we talk to them, we can talk to, to tell them a few things of like um, how to behave or things like that. It's just simple things such as being patient. Look him in the eye. Don't just talk at someone else. Talk to the person with dementia, that kind of thing. Be patient, you know, talk at their level, talk in a way you live in their world for a bit. But we've been, it's been great so far. The amount of um, um, response we've got so far has been fantastic and we're really pleased with going. This is the logo. Hopefully you'll see a lot more of it. Um, it's done a few shops at Sturch at the moment, in Morrison's and a few others. And um, as we're um, expanding the campaign along the high street, you'll see a lot more, hopefully. Um, people have been really positive in their support for us, and uh, we'll hope that will show in uh, the visibility. Um, this is uh, the poster. This is the welcome pack. We've got two welcome packs, one for members of the public, one for traders. Members of the public, it's a slightly different in terms of it's talking about how to, uh, um, uh, or things to do if you meet someone with dementia, that kind of thing. But with people with them, um, for traders, it's also got uh, more detailed about the actual environment that the actual, the store has got. So we talk a bit, a little bit more about that. Um, this is the welcome pack that gets sent out. We've also, um, which we'll chuff to bits about this, is that we got contacted by, um, the Alzheimer's Society, because they'd heard about us through some activity, our activity, and wanted to get involved. And so they've provided us with those dementia friends kits that we've acted to, to, um, to send out with our uh, packs as well. And all our events, um, the dementia friends have been really supportive of us, as in quite a few other community organisations, such as um, the Stoke the Way Forward, the Forum, and uh, Forward Carers. This is what they look like in real life, the packs before they're sent out. And then this is a few of the ads that hopefully you'll start to see more of. Um, this is in Morrison's. Um, this is, in, um, I think, Iron Oxide, Blood and Bandage. This is the Search Your Way Forward website. Um, this is what we're a bit keen on in being involved in, is being part of Sturchley. Um, this is part of Sturchley Trade Forward's um, track the campaign to say that Kurt Sturchley is still trading to get people to come down during the, the lockdown. And um, we're going to be, there's the map that's going to be put on the, the wall in Sturchley Park. We're going to be part of that as well. You know, Sturchley, the home of dementia friendly Sturchley, that kind of thing. So we're really pleased we started. And um, a couple of things as well. That One is that uh, I'll put this in the, the chat box. It's an invitation to uh, an event we're having on Saturday. Um, we're doing it at the back of Sturchley Library between 12 and 3. Uh, you are, if you can come along, please come along and say hello and uh, meet the rest of the guys and you know give it we'll give you a shout about some of more of our plans going forward and things like that um we're going to have um, some tai chi we're going to have um some um, a, a percussion and drumming some arts and crafts and quite a few other activities planned for the afternoon so it's going to be a fun afternoon as well as a, a serious message and the also the oops oh i've gone oh i haven't got it must have deleted it also i'll put in the video afterwards there's a little video that um, has just been released that I know some of you guys have seen it and um, I'll put it in the chat box, the link to it on YouTube. So, um, and that's it. If you want to follow us, please do. You can either email us at Leaf Creative Arts or follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, either at Leaf Creative Arts or Dementia Friendly Sturchley. We've got um, um, sites set up on both. Anyway, so thanks for your time. And uh, I'll be lead you back onto the main team. I did, so it's such a whistle stop tour. I literally could go on for hours about this. And I know that you guys want to go, you know, you want to go to bed sometime tonight. And I could be still here talking about it. So.
there's only questions. Um, as you know, it's a, a subject very close to my heart anyway, yeah. and um, I'm looking forward to coming on Saturday, and I hope Brilliant. people people will come. Um, and um, it's building on, you know, the work. Um, how many uh, of the shops have taken up the... Um... Um, there's only about three or four at the moment, but there will be more because it's all about how many we've actually sent out the packs to. So we've not been shaped. One of the difficulties was, was that when to talk to people, because we were talking, should we do it before Christmas? And then we thought, these guys aren't, might not survive. You know, they've got more things to worry about. And so we've only basically we've really do the last few weeks as they've started to open up. And it's now as they're opening up that we can go in and see them face to face. So, yeah, and so there will be more. Could the schools link in as well? Because uh, there's the schools, there's two schools, um, the Sturgeon yeah. School and, and Cottridge School. Yeah. You know, because maybe some of the pupils have, um, you know, grandparents or uh, with possibly dementia or anything yeah. like that. Well, I spoke to John. He's on the call today. I spoke to John, and so hopefully in the next week or so we should be able to meet up or do it and have a chat. But is there anything we can do at his school? And I've also had another contact to, to another school as well this morning from a friend of ours, and to one of those is there anything we can do sort of thing after seeing the video. So yeah, which is, we are expanding into that. Yeah, as well. Um, yeah. Aaron. Thank you. Um, let me just take my hand down. That's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, seen, I've seen the films and I've seen the pat, and I, I, I just think this is such a, a brilliant piece of work. I think most people on the call will know that uh, I'm part of the Sully Oak Neighbourhood Network scheme, so we lead the um, scheme, and I, and I have funded uh, Leaf uh, and, and Brendan in terms of taking on the... the um, the dementia friendly uh, work from our, our, our start with uh, Danny. Um, but I mean, it's absolutely fun. It is fantastic. And it really is leading in Birmingham. There still aren't, uh, I think Sturchley is still only the first place yeah. in Birmingham with the dementia friendly community yeah. status. Um, and certainly in terms of helping others, um, Brendan and the rest of Leaf will be involved in uh, other sessions with other Celio NNS partners yeah, um, yeah. and also further afield. And I and I was chatting to Brendan before we went live just to say, because the work is so fantastic. The city was asking for city council was asking for good practice for Dementia Week. And I've sent it all in. Yeah, and actually it is up on it is on BCC website as, well, as well because uh, it, it, this is really important work that yeah. um, is is taken forward. So just a huge congratulations yeah, thank you. Um, well, on, on the work that's uh, been done so far. Do you know one of the, one of the things I'm really chuffed about is it might not come to anything, but if it does, it'd be amazing, is that with other areas have heard about our work. So I've had presentations, of, me and Carl have done presentations to Sutton Cofield Town, set the Sutton, Sutton Council, Sutton Cofield Council, um, groups from Hall Green, from Cottridge. Um, um, do you know Sandra, who's on the Neighbourhood Forum? She, um, she, Sandra Cooper, she sent us an email the other day saying that they'd sent a lot of our activity, our stuff over to um, a group in Burntwood because they'd heard about it and they want to do something similar. So if we can actually inspire other areas to do something similar, then that would be absolutely amazing. But we need where we lead, others follow. Yeah, exactly. That's what part we wanted to do. It's like one of the things in the, uh, uh, the presentation, I just I think I picked up the wrong presentation at the end, but there's a little bit at the end is about how uh, some of the support that NNS have given us and some of the things that we'll be doing going forward, such as the REM pods, which are these these um, sort of like film sets, which are going to be in the, in the bats. And it's going to be for, they're very reminiscent, but they've got these great, they look great in terms of they're there for um, um, and for people to sit in and they can feel they're in a, in a train carriage or in a, a 1950s room or what have you. But they've got these actual uh, proven effects in terms of they help people with um, um, memory things, obviously, because the, the TVs and the radio will play 1940s music or 1960s TV shows. But they had these really weird effects that help with people eating. Anyone who's dealt with anyone with dementia will tell you that eating is a, is a really important part of it. 
is helping them to eat because there's some, it's one of the things about dementia is you forget to eat. You forget how to eat. It's called sequencing. You don't know how to pick up a spoon and things like that. And so if even if something like that can help some person, it'd be amazing. But yeah, like um, we're all, well, you'll, if, hopefully if you come see us on um, Saturday and you'll see that we're, all the guys are really passionate about what we do. And, um, you know, we, we really like t telling people about it. Well, we can feel we can feel the passion and, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the enthusiasm you have, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah. And I hope others can come as well yeah. because it's, it'll be worth coming. So I'll put an invite in the box and this link to the video as well, and I'll send off the uh, the, the proper presentation, the full presentation, which has got a couple more screen grabs at the end, and I'll send that through too. If you can share it to everyone as well, because some nice bits about the REM pods at the back of that. And, and the film, the, the, the video you made. Oh, yeah, the video, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got to share that, yeah. 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 Again, next stop, I'll be in Hollywood this time next year. That's all oh, I'm saying. You never know. <laughs> you never. You might get the Oscar. You'll, yeah. You certainly deserve an award anyway. Thank you very much. Oh, um, I think now we've got the Commonwealth Games um, and Karen. Um, oh, okay. So... Um, I'm going to just do a quick chat because uh, I think I feel as if many of you are going to test me on this because most of you have heard it at least three times and I need to make sure that I'm fairly consistent. Um, so, uh, good evening. I'm here wearing, not wearing my Stochie Bass hat or Celio NNS hat, but here in terms of my uh, uh, role in the city as head of service for Naval Development Support Unit. And we are coordinating one of the Commonwealth Games uh, community grants, which is called Celebrating uh, Communities. And this is a grant where there is a, uh, a citywide where there's a two million pot, but a certain amount of money has been allocated to each ward. So for Sturchley, it's 14,300. Um, and the... Um, uh, the grants uh, are for proposals that are around three simple um, uh, areas of work. One's getting active, but certainly it's not sports orientated. This could be gardening, uh, walking, barn dancing, skipping, hopping. I think somebody's trying to, we're trying to see if we can get an egg and spoon race going around the whole of Birmingham. I think that's one of the things that uh, been looking at. So there's a getting active. There's an uh, 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 the other theme is uh, ready, steady, fun, and the third one is around celebrating culture. Um, there are some uh, funding criteria. It has to be um, a, co a, a community organisation with a bank account. Really, that that's as as far as it uh, as it is. Um, and also any proposals do need to link back to the the ward plan and priorities. Sturchy has a ward plan and priorities. Uh, it, that's on the website. Um, and uh, um, yeah, a, a, proposals will fit in. So um, those closing dates for the, for those particular. So sorry, I start again. So there are th three. Uh, different levels of, of grant that people can apply for 1000 uh 5000 10000 so there are, you you know that there, there are small amounts of money that people can apply for the first closing date is the 1st of june and the second closing date has been brought forward a little will be about october the 1st so it's been live on the uh commonwealth games website since the big, the end of March, beginning of uh, April. Um, and the activities need to take place between October of this year through to the end of August next year, which is actually when the games, games are on. Um, in terms of putting an application in, I am going to put in the in the chat the uh, website that you can uh, go to and and get the um, the electronic versions of the forms. I think they're I'm we didn't do them. We we think they're quite difficult to fill in. If you just want a bog standard form 
then let me know and, I, and we can send those out as well. There are two other bits uh, that we've added uh, in to assist community organisations to put grants together. So we have commissioned uh, Birmingham Community Matters, who many of you will already know, and Locality, who's a, a national or community organisation, to run additional community support and advice for community groups. They are running guidance sessions. There are still some uh, uh, on the 24th, 25th and 27th of May. So that's next week. And then there will be others. Plus a lot of one to one support for community groups. They've also loaded an awful lot of useful information on their website. And I will also put that um, in the chat box so people can have a have a look uh, at that as well. Um, so that's that's because we want people we want groups to succeed. We don't want people to go to a whole lot of trouble to put a proposal in and it and it and it not be one that meets the criteria. So uh, that's why there's the support there. When it does come into us at NDSU, some of my team are going to pre-assess those proposals anyway. And if there are bits that need strengthening, they will be sent out and said, have you thought about adding this in as well? Or it doesn't quite meet the criteria. You might need to um, just tweak it a little. So there'll be, there'll be that sort of pre-screening and that they'll go back out to community groups. Um, the third bit that's really quite important is that what we would really wanted was that the whole community was involved in the decision making of um, which proposals as a ward group of stakeholders and residents you felt best fit what you wanted to do in your in your ward. So um, we've come up with a very fancy title of participatory decision making, uh, but that that really just means everybody gets a, gets a, a, a decision uh, gets a vote as to which ones they would quite like to uh, uh, fund. Those there will be a special ward meetings uh, facilitated by um, uh, someone independent. Again, we wanted uh, community anchor organisations local to uh, wards, but it, they've been done by constituency to actually um, facilitate that process. For Selly Oak constituency, including um, Search Ward, it will be done by me, but supporting uh, a number of community organisations to actually do that. And that enables everybody to fully be able to get engaged in that decision making process. Um, and everybody gets a vote, uh, including Councillor Locke also gets a vote, but a, a vote alongside the rest, everybody. Um, so groups will come and present what they're doing, need to do it in whatever format they feel most comfortable in. Uh, you're all very good at PowerPoint, you lot. So you could do it by PowerPoint, you can do it by uh, verbal, you can do it by uh, film, whatever, whatever. And that's also to help groups begin to feel comfortable presenting really good ideas. Um, and then it will be the voting will be uh, by hand or ticking a box on the chat or uh, emailing in afterwards. It, it, it is very flexible, but it is really to to try and get everybody feeling engaged. So the best way for everybody to feel engaged with projects is that it's done collaboratively so that they're not being done in competition with each other. It isn't a huge amount of money, but really the the I suspect the proposals that will get a greater joy will be the ones where people have been sort of know that they've been done collectively and are meeting the, the criteria of what Sturchley feels is, is, is important. Um, so we think that those sort of ward facilitation meetings will start to be held about mid July and they are different and will be separate to meetings like this, which is obviously chaired by the ward councillor. Um, so it, 
it really is. It's, it, we're trying a few things out this year. It's really a bit bit different to usual uh, funds. The other thing, uh, and we often say this in Neighbourhood Development Support Unit, there's no such thing as a bad proposal. It might just be the wrong funding stream. So we'll also support those organisations who've got really good ideas, but this this perhaps isn't quite the, the right fund. We will help organisations with other, uh, other external funds that it might be more appropriate uh, for. Um, so uh, that will also be added. The last bit I just wanted to, to mention as well, before if there are any questions, is that there is going to be another funding stream that actually goes live next week. It's not one that we're NDSU are coordinating. This is uh, being coordinated directly by the Commonwealth Games um, uh, uh, Committee uh, and it's called, going to be called Creative City. Um, it's another £2 million fund. Um, it, it hasn't got allocations per ward like the Celebrating Communities one had. It is a citywide uh, fund, but they are hoping that um, things will be funded in as many wards as, as as possible. And that very much is a is more of the arts and culture um, uh, funds. Um, don't have the details, but it, it does go live next week. So uh, we can certainly and will be sending around those details. So you can mix and match the funding. I know John it, it has talked to already about lots of creative types of activities. It may be that you can uh, complement with both funds. Their, their dates for their um, um, deadlines are uh, not the same as uh, the Celebrating Communities, which obviously went out uh, a bit sooner. But I think off the top of my head, I did write it down and of course I've lost my bit of paper. Um, but I think it's Ju July and I think it's October, but so they're 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 going to be they might be slightly out of, out of uh, out of sync, um, but it may well be that something small is done in the first uh, using celebrating communities, and that might build into something that's uh, bigger the following following year. Um, so I think that's it, Mary from. Uh, from me at the at the moment, but I'm more than happy to answer any uh, questions, and I'll keep putting things in the chat box as we go along. Any questions, John? John. Hi. Hi. Um, the one question I have: you mentioned um, just to present in some form. When will those presentations take place and, uh, yeah, date really? Um, there's no set date because it will depend on how, if any, do come in for this first date, the closing date on June the 1st, because there's no compulsion that it has to be in by June the 1st. And indeed, the me all members, obviously including Councillor Locke, have been sent uh, further guidance from uh, the Commonwealth Games legacy team who hold hold the money uh, to say don't spend all your money in this first round because um, it's it's one set of money it's 14,300 to cover both um, so it, it 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 very much depends on whether any do come in for start sheet in that first round closing dates June the 20 uh, June the 1st NDSU will then um, uh, look at those and prepare them um, so they're ready. So meetings will will probably be at the beginning of July to the end of July, but they will be sent out well in advance so that um, people who have got proposals have got enough time to, to know that they're going to uh, might maybe present but it's not it's not to go overboard. It, it's you know it'll be sort of a five five or six minutes ago. So yes, that's they, the the idea. Yeah. So um, and then the decision making is done on the on the night generally. Or if there are those who haven't been able to come to the ward forum, 
but we have a, a big list of people who who usually do attend then they will be given an opportunity to email in what what they feel so that'll all be collated and we'll uh, we'll come back to NDSU and then the actual um, proposals are formally signed off and approved by what what we call delegated authority through the cabinet member and senior officers. Yeah. Are many coming in for Sturchley at the moment or, or not? Or? Um, I, it's not me who's doing it. I've kept a bit outside of that because um, obviously uh, some, we will be assessing them and because I'm trying to support and develop, I can't assess as well. So um, we haven't had, citywide there haven't been many that have come in. I think we've got 25 proposals. Now some of them have been parachuted in, whereas you have really, really got to show that you've got some affiliation to the ward that you are applying for funds. I mean, I know um, on just the, the Banner Sturchley together, the yeah. several groups like yeah. uh, the yeah. Neighbourhood Forum, uh, John came to the meet. We had a meeting last Friday and you know, yeah. talked about different ideas. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I certainly think that's the better that's the better way of doing yeah. it. That that's more yeah. of the philosophy behind um, the fund or having a theme in Sturchley, so every community group can do yes. something along that that theme. Um, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think most people, um, given we, we were in lockdown, like April 1st, people are beginning to emerge. We think there'll be more opportunity to do stuff. Most people will apply in the second round, but we have got to match them up because it's already on the website. What we're noticing is that not random groups because I don't mean that, but they're they're just applying for funds without really having any any stake in the ward that they're applying to. You know, they've just seen money and they, and that's not good. That really is not going to be the way forward. It's got to be the ones that are, that are firmly based in their ward. Sorry, well, I was just I just. Uh, 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 Brendan's just saying thank you. Uh, we thank you too, Brendan, as well. Um, thanks, Kat. Is there any more questions? John, have you got any more, or Catherine, or anyone? I'll just put the Birmingham Community Matters website in as well, because um, uh, the, f the formal site is the uh, Commonwealth Games um, site, the, the Birmingham Community Matters actually shows uh, on their site. They've got lots of helpful information. It will be they will have all the ward plan uh, ward plans and priorities ward packs. Um, they are there through the sessions that they've already run. Quite a lot of questions are coming up, so they're actually going to um, put together. I hate the word toolkit, but I can't think of another word to use instead of that. But they're going to do. How do you organise? How how do you organise an event which require may require still some COVID secure um, um, application to it? Um, how do you apply for a parks license if you want to do something in the park? So they're going to they're going to put all of that on. So it very much is to to assist and support um, community organisations to put good stuff on over the period leading up to the Commonwealth Games. Well, thank I don't you. know, John, is that an old hand or a new hand? Is my hand up? Yeah. Oh, hang on. I can't see the hand anyway. Um, more actions. Uh, lower hand. Oh, there we go. Sorry. There we go. It's all right, just in case you've got another question. <laughs> But really, it is about thinking outside the box here. I mean, it really is celebrating what's really good about Sturchley. How can you enhance what's already really good and celebrate it? Um, so that's it's, it's it. But also have a think about match funding, because if it's with older people, then there's the neighborhood network, small grant scheme. If it's culture and arts, there's obviously going to be the creative cities. 
Um, so that you know, it, it, it um, there are uh, there's other stuff that you can use to. Steve, I don't know whether you 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 might be having your opening date somewhere around then. Then you know that that would be uh, you know an opportunity to. And Catherine yeah. and your table tennis uh, stuff. I will get back to you when I'm actually at, at work rather than sitting at home. Decorate dad, dad's lane in a load of Commonwealth Games um, flags and everything. That would be great. <laughs> Uh, just do a cancer uh, update um, on from the 28th to the 5th of uh, uh, to the 13th of June. It is keep Britain tidy. Um, we're lucky at the moment, and a few of us go out once a week uh, litter picking. Uh, unfortunately, this year I can't go because from the from the 1st of June, I've got to isolate because I've got an operation on uh, just as minor up. Uh, I've got to have um, cataract surgery, but uh, I shall go out and do a little bit, uh, one day of it. But we've got a great little group um, and uh, we've got loads of new equipment. I've ordered it um, and uh, it should be coming. So that will, you know, we go around keeping Sturchley, you know, clean and tidy. Um, Hopefully the houses at the Taylor Wimpy site, the, you know, what was uh, Seven Capital, they will be starting next month. I don't know an exact day, but they said at the neighbourhood forum it, it would be within a few weeks. So um, that that's good. I don't know about the rest of the site. The, part of it's going to be retail. Part of it's going to be the cooperative housing. Um, the sooner the better because the site does look a mess on the front and uh, that's one of my annoyances I, I'd love something built there before the Commonwealth Gap before well before the Commonwealth Games I'd like the site cleared and something there because it you know it does make Sturchley look a mess and um, it would be nice to have something there you know supposed to be uh, a supermarket and a gym and other retail but as to when or what I don't know and which supermarket I don't know uh, I don't know anything about the site um that little own um there's no news there either but um we uh we will see but uh are there any questions you've got for me at all does anyone have any questions no you've been very kind to me tonight um you can always email me although i'm having minor surgery i'll still be obtainable and uh you know for emails and you know any any queries or anything i hope to be having um, my advice surgeries um uh, in 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 time uh, hopefully in july but uh, we'll see how things go and um i look forward to uh, seeing you all soon um in both in face to face um i'll see you saturday and if you can please come along to the dementia De dementia awareness day and um you know keep supporting spiritually uh, and make it uh, great and a dementia friendly area because uh, it's it, it is a wonderful place to live and, and work and, and and thank you and it's wonderful to represent Sturchley. Okay and it's going to be sunshine on Saturday so that's good that's just what we need. <laughs> and Steve if you need any help with clearing when I'm ready, I'll I'll come up and clear or whatever. There's lots of ideas there for Dad's line. All right, I'll 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 say goodbye and um, see you soon. See you guys. Thanks for the call. Bye. Thanks for, bye now. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.